Hey guys, back with another video on uh, the series talking about the different leukemias and some really cool mnemonics to go for some of the important points that you may see on the USMLE Step 1. So let's get right into this. The mnemonic is really focused around basically the title of the, the disease, the chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So this is how it's going to work. You look at CLL and think that a lot of times when you see a letter like in an alphabet, you could say that A equals 1, and B equals 2, and C equals 3, and then and so forth. So in this example, let's just say that C is going to be 3, just like you could use in a lot of different systems, you know, to encoding and stuff like that. And then LL, well just imagine that instead of writing out CLL like this, you write out CLL. Just do a lowercase l for that. So C L, L and that'll be like the letter, that'll be like the number one, L, or lowercase l would be like the number one. So when you add all of those up, you get the number five. Okay, so just using this, just CLL to begin with for this disease, you get the number five. And the first point I want to make is using that alone, we see CD5 is found um, co-expressed with the typical CD markers that you would see. Because remember that CEL, CLL, I'm sorry, is just increased naive B cells. Uncontrolled increase uh, proliferation of naive B cells. And remember with B cells, let me write over here, B cells have the markers CD19 and 20. Early, uh, the, the, when, when you're making B cells, you can use these markers to detect um, early kind of uh, naive B cells. So you would expect these two to be here, but what really gives this disease away is that CD5 is going to be co-expressed with the uh, CD19 and 20. You can really just remember CD20. The reason I say to just remember CD20 is because if you can remember the 3 plus 1 plus 1, that's here for so 3 plus 1 plus 1 is going to be 5, then you know, just think of in intervals of 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, then you can help you remember 20 is obviously going to be with the B cell. So that's the first part of this mnemonic. But then we get into the rest of this mnemonic. Now the rest of this mnemonic is revolves around kind of in the title of this again. So CLL, and just think when you see CL, just think of clean. Somebody's cleaning something, right? And whenever I think of cleaning, I always think of, like, like I don't, I typically don't like to clean. But you'll find a lot of elderly people that really enjoy cleaning, like older people. So that's uh, one of the important things to remember about this uh, leukemia is that this is typically in older patients. Okay, that's gonna that. So in a test question, you'll see like that can help you kind of guide you towards CLL if you're trying to decide which type. If you see it presenting in an older patient, all right. Also, what's important is you see this elderly patient that I put right here, and there's a cleaning uh, bucket next to, next to the elderly lady, so that's going to help you remember about the clean, the CL for clean, and I already told you that the C is, stands for three, you know, like ABC, so that's three plus one plus one for the two lowercase l's, that equals five, so that'll tell you CD5. Remember that CD5 is normally a marker for preliminary T cells. It's normally for T cells, but the fact that it's on these B cells is telling you that they're abnormal. So there's increased proliferation of these naive B cells presenting CD5 on its surface, co-expressed with the typical CD19 and CD20 that you will find um, on the B cells. Kind of tells, it kind of points towards the direction of CLL. All right, back to the rest of our mnemonic. So this elderly lady is watching, with, you know, with the mop bucket and everything, is watching. TV. And what happens to be on TV? Well, it's the channel HGTV. And you use this. Why does that go along with this mnemonic? Because usually on HGTV, there's a lot of shows about like cleaning up houses and flipping houses and like, um, you know, different yard work and cleaning and stuff like that. So that's what kind of helps you uh, to remember that channel. Well, when you look at this, let's look at the letters H, G, T, and V. When you look at this, H and G stands for hypo gamma globulinemia. It's a mouthful. All that's really saying is you have decreased immunoglobulins. Because remember, and this is what's kind of confusing about this, when you think of CLL, a type of cancer, a leukemia, 
you would imagine if there's an increased number of these naive B cells, the, you would think that these naive B cells would then turn into, you know, mature B cells or plasma cells, and these plasma cells would increase, uh, would be producing um, uh, immunoglobulins. But these are abnormal B cells, and that's hinted towards because of the CD5 marker. Clearly, they're not they're not the correct type of naive B cell that's being um, increased. So these increased proliferation of abnormal B cells actually lowers the immunoglobulins. And so Hg will help you remember hypogammaglobulinemia. Okay? The T stands for thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. Another big mouthful word to just mean in uh, decreased platelets. Now, this, you really need to kind of use your imagination. Just remember this part that, yeah, you can have thrombocytopenia, but really the more common one you'll see is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. It's because of this. And so what happens is you are having a decrease in the immunoglobulins because we have these abnormal B cells that are being produced, but, but, that doesn't mean they're like completely absent and the ones that are produced are abnormal within themselves so you have an abnormal naive B cell that could eventually you know turn into a plasma cell a mature B cell send out immunoglobulins but they're abnormal and these abnormal immunoglobulins can then become autoimmune so it will begin attacking yourself it will attack RBCs and it will attack platelets okay primarily RBCs, but I just remember it as it's going to attack platelets as well. Okay, so they become, they base, they can attack RBCs or platelets, and that thus is going to lower your red blood cell count, and it's going to lower your platelet count. Okay, so that's where this in the mnemonic, uh, that's why that's useful. All right, so HGTV, and then the V, I don't really have it to stand for anything specific, but that's just to help you, the more important part is the HG. T. All right, so let's do a quick review of all the stuff that we covered. Um, so we have CLL, we know like A would be equal to 1, B would be equal to 2, and C would be equal to 3, and so forth. You can use the alphabet and coding to kind of have a number system. So we know that C is equal to 3, and I told you to just basically get used to writing CLL as with two lowercase l, so this should really be written as this. So 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals 5. So that tells you, okay, this is involving CD5 positivity co-expressed. So this is going to be with CD20. How do you remember CD20? Because it's an interval of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, right? So there's the 5 and there's the 20. So this is CD5 positive, CD20 positive. So that's a way to recognize this. Also, you can use the CLL to remember CL stands for clean. And imagine that when you clean something, oh, I forgot to tell you this, this is a really important point. When you clean something up, you imagine you're cleaning up like a puddle or like a mark of something, right? So you're cleaning a counter, or you're cleaning whatever, and you could clean up a smudge. So a smudge cells, I don't know how I missed this earlier, I apologize about that. This is very high yield, smudge cells. When you look at a, let's say you took uh, a little what is it called, like put it on a, a surface here, right, and you're looking at uh, the blood cell, the RBCs, on a, sorry, blood smear, there it is, blood smear, and you're looking at these RBCs around here, and then of course you would have in that, you know, other, uh, b besides just RBCs, you may have white blood cells, and you may see a neutrophil, you may see lymphocytes, or whatever the case may be, so in this situation, these naive B cells are, obviously abnormal and deformed and when you put them on a blood smear with all you know add the blood on a blood smear because they're abnormal and not correct and you know all sorts of problems with it it ends up getting damaged and so you basically see what looks like a little smear and if you go to Google you can type in on Google images uh, and you can look at a smudge cell how do you remember smudge cell because you use the mnemonic CL you just remember CLL CL for clean CL see so you would obviously you would clean up a smudge so we have 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5 that remember CD5 and we then therefore you can remember CD20 you have the CL for clean and that helps you remember for smudge cells that's diagnostic when you see that for this disease and then also you know that this is in elderly patients because elderly patients love to clean 
So you, you know, like, you know, you never, kids always get mad or like if they're in trouble with their parents and they don't like to clean. But in this situation, elderly people, a lot of times like to clean up the house and stuff. So that will help you remember that this is a disease primarily seen in the elderly. And also remember that this patient, um, elderly people enjoy watching uh, TV shows that kind of like our TV channels like HGTV and HGT. We're going to use that in the HGTV. H and G stands for hypogamma globulinemia, which is just a fancy word for decreased immunoglobulins or decreased antibodies is another word for that. And then the T is for thrombocytopenia. Why is it thrombocytopenia? Because you have autoimmune hemolytic anemia. The few naive B cells that do end up making immunoglobulins, they're abnormal. Basically, they're not working correctly, and these abnormal um, IgGs will can can end up developing into an autoimmune uh, situation where they attack your blood cells and they attack your platelets. Therefore, you will have decreased levels of RBCs and decreased platelets. I hope this covered. I hope this helped you, and I hope this covered the main points um, to help you kind of distinguish some of the CLL from some of the other things. You know, these different leukemias get really confusing because if you think of all of the different translocations and the different CD markers and like let take for example, you know, if you're looking at AML, you know, with AML you would have to remember the translocation in acute promyelocytic leukemia. And with AML, specifically uh, APML, uh, I have a really cool mnemonic video on that that I can tell you right off the bat. It's translocation 1517, a piece of 17 going to 15, and it causes an abnormal uh, retinoic acid receptor. But I, it's not like I was able to just flat out memorize that with all the different types of leukemia and the different translocations. I use a very simple mnemonic, a one sentence mnemonic that helps me remember all of the key features. And I will link that video if you're interested in figuring out some of the important points for AML, that test uh, question that you often see in QBanks and ways to remember some of that as well. And I highly recommend that video. It helped me a lot to keep some of these straight. Um, if this helped you at all, please like. Share, share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot. And uh, post what you want me to cover in the comment section. If you want me to cover another type of leukemia, I can do that. I, this is my second video. The first one I made was on AML, like I was telling you earlier. And I plan to make some other ones uh, in the future, kind of going into ones like hairy cell leukemia and some different other ones as well, just like that. I will see you in another video. Bye, guys.